All right, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, my name is Michael Williams, and we'll be getting started in just a moment. Give people just a few seconds to get in. Uh, please do let me know if you can hear and see me okay. And I'm going to send you a message as well in the chat. Can you hear and see me okay? And if you guys can just also type uh, where you're connecting from, that would be very, very helpful. We were going to have a guest today, Dr. Ismail, um, but we're having some trouble getting him in. Uh, if he's not able to make it today, we'll definitely get him in on the next webinar, which we hope to have pretty soon. So once again, thank you guys for joining. Today, uh, we are going to be talking about three ways for you to be able to say those difficult words or letters or sounds with confidence and ease. Th three ways for you to be able to say those difficult words, letters or sounds with confidence and ease. So let's just see uh, who we have joining us here first. All right. As you're typing, if, if you can go ahead and just confirm that you can hear and see me okay, just type yes into the chat box. Okay. Very, very important that you are able to do that. Yes. Great. Wonderful. Okay. So we have some from India, from England. Very cool. All right. And who else do we have? If you're, if you're on here today and you're able to, I know some of you might be driving or something. If you're able to go ahead and let us know where you're connecting from. It's, it's pretty helpful. I'm also going to be sharing with you a couple of things. I have a handout that you'll be able to download. And, and it's just a basic, very, very basic outline of the slides that I'll be showing to you today. So you'll be able to access that if you're on the webinar today. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen with you today. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see my screen. So three ways to say those difficult letters or words with confidence and ease. All right. So there's a few things that I want you to be aware of that are very, very important and that are foundational to you being able to say the words and letters that you want to say. So let's first talk about the specific situation, the context that we're talking about. So you have a word or you have a letter. Sometimes people talk to me about vowel sounds. They have a difficult time saying vowel sounds. Sometimes people say they have a difficult time saying consonants. Often it's not all vowel sounds or all consonants. It's just some or it's certain words or letters. Unfortunately, for some, these words or letters are words or letters like their name, their first name or their last name, often it's the first name, or the school they went to, the school they graduated from, uh, the name of their company. It could be the coffee that they like, it could be something like chicken or a food that they like. So sometimes it's something pretty important or the city or town where they live or the name of their wife or their child. I've had all of these, all of these kinds of situations where for one reason or another, your brain stops you when you're getting ready to say these words or letters. Now, here's the funny thing about it. It doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen all the time. It only happens in certain situations or circumstances. So it might be when you have to introduce yourself or when you're in a meeting or when you're on a phone call. But for most people, they don't struggle with these words or letters 100% of the time. So we're not really going to talk about why this happens. We may get into that a little bit. We're going to talk about some solutions. But before we get to those specific solutions, I'm actually going to probably give you four. But we're going to talk about a, a found, actually three foundational principles that absolutely must be in place before this will work. OK, so let me again share my screen with you. And this first principle 
and you've probably heard me talk about this before, and this can apply to just about anything. The first principle is that you are responsible. You are 100% responsible for your life, but also for your speech. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because if you believe that you're not responsible for at least fixing or transforming or improving your speech, right? I'm not saying you're responsible for stuttering or stammering, that it's your fault. No, because fault and responsibility are not necessarily the same things. We are saying that you're responsible for transforming, for improving your speech. I'm not responsible. The speech therapist is not responsible. Your parents, you're responsible for taking your speech to that next level, for transforming, for improving your speech. So you have to accept 100% responsibility for that process. If you don't, then what will happen is you may begin to blame other people or other things for your speech. Well, uh, God did this. The universe did it. It was my parents' fault. Or uh, this program didn't work. Or that speech therapy didn't work. Or this video, these techniques or, or tips or tricks just didn't work, right? So you're putting the responsibility, the blame, you're blaming someone else and you're putting the responsibility for your own speech on someone else, which doesn't help you. It doesn't help you. So you have to take 100% responsibility for transforming your speech. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. That is, if it's going to be, it's up to you, right? You have to take the steps necessary to transform your speech. It's in your hands. No one else. Very, so if you don't accept that, then what will happen is you'll find yourself vacillating, trying this program, trying that program. This one doesn't work. This one worked for a little while, but it stopped working. Oh, that Michael Williams said that this would work and it didn't work, right? So you'll be always putting the blame and the responsibility on someone else. So you have to accept full responsibility for your life and for your speech. And that goes for all of us, right? For all of us. Number two, you are in control. There's a law, it's called the law of control. And it says that you feel better about yourself and you feel better about your life and you'll feel better about your speech the more in control you feel that you are over those aspects of your life. So the more in control you feel over your speech, the better you feel about yourself, the better you feel about your life, the more confident you feel when you feel like you have control. Let's look at the opposite. When people feel like their speech is out of their control, like they never know when they're going to get stuck. And so their speech, or at least some aspects of their speech is totally out of their control they don't feel as good, at least about that aspect of their life, about their ability to speak well all the time or in certain situations. So they don't feel real confident. They don't feel real good. For other people, their speech may be impacting them in every area of their life. So they don't feel as good as they could feel about their life in general. Their confidence is a little lower. Sometimes their self-esteem is a little lower than what it could be if they didn't have that struggle. Okay. So this law says that you and I feel better about ourselves. We feel better about our life. We feel better about our speech. We feel better about our ability to handle any speaking situation when we have and when we feel and when we believe we have control over that area. So the more control you feel you have over your speech, the better you feel, the more confident you feel. The less control, the worse you feel. So here's the thing. You do have control over your speech. You can get control over your speech. There are certain things that I always talk about that you have control over. Now, here is the key. Here's what you have to remember. Some of these things you have to practice. You have to develop gaining control over. So right now, in this moment, there probably are, which is why you're here, certain words or letters that you have difficulty saying and you feel like you believe it's out of your control. I just can't say them sometimes. And that may be true in this moment. However, and you'll hear me repeat this again, 
what you do today is going to impact what you do tomorrow. So what the way you practice speaking today, the way you practice thinking today is going to impact the way you think, feel, and speak tomorrow. And the way you think, feel, and speak tomorrow is going to impact the way you speak the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. Okay? So therefore, if you want to get a certain effect, a certain result, uh, next week, three weeks from now, a month from now, you have to change what you're thinking now, right? And how you are speaking now. You have to start changing that right now. So you say, well, I, I can't say these certain words or letters. Great. Well, I'm going to be sharing with you some things that you can start doing today that will help you to be able to say those letters and words the next week or the week after or the month after. Okay. And you have to remember that these things can take time and it depends on a few factors. Number one, consistency, repetition, and time. We'll dig into these a little later. Consistency, repetition, and time. So if you're not consistent, there's not enough repetition, or you don't spend enough time, you can't expect to tomorrow or the next day or the next week to be able to say those words or letters. And this applies to almost anything, to exercising, to learning something new, to learning a new skill. I compare what we're doing with learning a new language. You simply cannot expect to learn a new language if you don't start practicing reading, watching, listening, practicing by yourself and practicing with others. If you don't do that enough, if you're not consistent, there's not enough repetition over time, you can't, you, you wouldn't expect yourself to be able to do that fluently, right? This is the same thing. Okay, so you have to remember that you are in control. You're in control over what you think. You're in control over what you do. So here are the four things that I talk about that you're in control of when it comes to speaking. You are in control of your thinking, right? You're in control of what you say to yourself, your self-talk. You're in control of your breathing. You can control your breathing. You're in control of the speed, the rate of the rate of speed in which you are speaking. Okay. And you're in control of your body language, of your body, of how you move your body when you're speaking. So those four things you can control. And by controlling them, you, you eventually and ultimately control your ability to speak smoothly. It's when you don't believe, right? It's when you don't believe that you have any control. And I had someone say this, well, uh, for stutterers, we don't have control. We lose control. Sometimes we lose control of our thinking. We lose control of our breath. Well, that might be true in the moment, but it doesn't have to stay true. There are things that you can do to gain control over your breathing, over your speech, over your speed, over your thinking. Okay. So it has to start Right now, with your belief, you have to believe that, you know what, I can control or I can start to control or there's a way for me to be able to control those things that I just talked about. Ultimately, control my speech. Ultimately, to be able to say the things that I want to say smoothly. Okay? There is a way that you can do this. And it starts with you, number one, knowing that I'm responsible. It's up to me. I've got to do this. Right? I can get help. I probably need help, but it's ultimately it's up to me. Number two, I can control this, right? There's some things that I need to start doing right now that will give me more and more control. I have a client right now. I've had many clients who, when we start with, when, when they started with me, you could see there were a lot of secondary movements, their body, um, stammering, stuttering, doing all, jerking, all kinds of things. Prior to that, this person may have thought, or at least believed, I can't control it. It's just something that happens, and there's nothing I can do about it, right? It's not true, because now when you talk to this person, yeah, and we haven't been working together for that long, so he says, well, yeah, there's some times where I just, I want to get it out, and I want to hurry up and say it, and so I'll push it out, right? But now, when he's talking to me, and when he's talking to some other people, he doesn't do that, okay? So there are a few times when he does, but only because he lets himself just do it, just lose control. 
And guess what? The more control he exercises over those secondary movements, over his speech, the more that becomes a pattern, the more that control becomes a pattern, meaning he won't have to think about it consciously. He'll just speak smoothly like you and I. But it's something that he has to focus on consciously now, exercise control over now, so that weeks from now, months from now, it's something that's automatic. So you're responsible, you're in control. And then finally, here's another one. You have to believe that you either are or that you are becoming. Now, for most of you, it will be that you're becoming an excellent speaker. Now, I just posted a video update from one of my clients named Jason. So I want you to go watch that on YouTube and I'll send it to you as well. Uh, but he is now starting to believe that he's an excellent speaker. He didn't believe that at first, but as he goes through this process, he's starting to believe it. Why? Because he's applying the Pro 90 speech system. He's using it, right? He's going through the daily routine. He's using what he's learning. And people are telling him, wow, you're an excellent speaker. His boss is telling him, we're going to be giving you more speaking opportunities. So he, because he believed that it was possible, he took responsibility. He's exercising control. He's starting to believe that he's becoming an excellent speaker because a part of Pro90D is we don't just want you to stop stuttering or overcome stuttering. We want you to become an excellent speaker. And so as that happens, what happens is you start to exercise that, you start to implement that, and people are firm. And people say, wow, you're a great speaker. In fact, one of the things that we say is that when you speak, people will listen, they'll love it, and they'll want more. And his boss is telling him that, that they're listening to him. They're actually smiling. He said his boss actually smiles when he does his updates. They're listening. They love it. They love to hear him speak. And they want more, right? So this is something that can be true for you. So you want to believe that you are at least becoming an excellent speaker, that it, this is possible for you. Okay. Now, let's take a look at... Four things, I'm actually going to give you four ways, three primary, but I'm going to give you another one. So this first one is this. Let's, let's take a look. This first one is redefine your speech goals from negative to positive. Now, this, is, this is important. Redefine your speech goals from negative to positive. So here's what this means and here's why it's important. Now note, you're thinking, well, okay, Michael, how does redefining my speech goals from negative to positive help me say my name or help me say this word that I need to say like right now. How does it help me right now? Well, remember, <clears throat> if you're only looking for something that's immediate, that's short term, that will work right now, there's a good chance that it won't work in the long term, right? You're looking for something that's a trick, a tip or a technique, which are all cool. They're all important. What I want to give you is something for the long, the long term, right? Which means Everything starts with our thinking, with the way we think. So we have to start working on how we think. And here's why that's important. Redefine your speech goals from negative to positive. What does that mean? It means instead of saying something like, I don't want to block on this word, or I hope I don't block or get stuck on this word, you say, I want to speak smoothly. Not just I want to say this word smoothly, but I want to start speaking smoothly. I want to speak smoothly. I want to speak clearly. I want to be an amazing speaker. So you shift your focus from what you don't want to do. I don't want to get stuck on this word here to I want to speak smoothly. So when you have a positive goal, I talked about this in the last webinar. When you're focused on something that's positive, you're more likely to move in that direction. When you're focused on something negative, you're more likely to move in that direction. So if you're thinking about what it is you don't want to do, you're just going to get more of it in most cases. So if you're thinking, I don't want to block, I don't want to get stuck, more than likely, you're going to get more of that. You're going to actually get stuck. And we'll talk about some of the reasons why in the next little part, in the next way of how to say uh, these difficult words talk about the law of relaxation and so forth. But, but the first thing is for you to remember to start thinking about how you want to speak, how you want to speak. I want to speak smoothly. So 
Here's a question. What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like to speak smoothly? What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like to speak smoothly? So you want to spend your time being around people, watching and listening and practicing speaking smoothly. You don't want to spend your time around people who are stuttering and thinking about and talking about stuttering and ways to not stutter and ways to treat stuttering, and ways to manage stuttering. So that's all about stuttering. It's all about blocking or not blocking. Forget about that. Focus on how can I speak smoother? How can I speak smooth? Because isn't that what you want to do? If you don't want to do that, then this is not the webinar for you. Pro90D is not the program for you. There are plenty of other programs that work with people to help them deal with stuttering. This program is about helping you speak smoothly and clearly and confidently and feel more relaxed, right? To become an influencer, to become an excellent speaker. Because remember, if you speak smoothly, 95, 97, 98% of the time, you won't be stuttering 80 or 60 or 40 or 50 or 90, right? You can't. You can only then have this fluency as a 5% or 2% or 3% because you're speaking smooth. So all we have to do is focus on how can we get you speaking smoother and smoother, feeling more and more relaxed, more and more confident. Because once we do that, the stuttering, the stammering, the blocking just takes care of itself. They can't coexist, right? I watch this happen all the time and it's based on science. We focus on this, this takes care of itself. So redefine your speech goals from negative to positive. I wanna speak smoothly. How do I speak smoothly? Well, what does speaking smoothly look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? Who does it? The fastest way for you to know what it looks and sounds and feels like is modeling. Why recreate the will? If there's somebody out there who's speaking smoothly and you can mimic them, you can imitate them, then that's your fastest way to get there, right? So instead of trying to make it up yourself, you can. It's just going to be harder. It's going to take longer. So people who are extremely successful at what they do, there have been people that have come before them that they have admired and that they have modeled. They've modeled certain aspects of that person's life. So any athlete, any musician, leaders, there's been someone that they said, wow, I like the way they do that. I'm going to imitate them. So they adopt it, they adopt it, and then they adapt it for themselves. So people who model me, they don't have to model me forever. Often it's just for a period of months. And then what happens is because of habit, if they continue to speak a certain way, if they're continuing to model me, they actually develop their own new style of speaking. Okay. So modeling doesn't mean that you have to make pretend or believe that you're someone else forever. It doesn't mean you're changing your whole personality. It's just a way in a sense to trick your brain, to give your brain a goal, a positive goal, a new way of looking at the way that you speak, a new way of speaking so that you can develop that into a habit. So you're redefining your goals from negative to positive. Second thing, become more relaxed so you can feel, act, and speak more relaxed. Become a more relaxed person. So let's talk about the law of relaxation, and then we'll come back to the law of reversibility. The law of relaxation and the law of reversibility. Okay, so what's the law of relaxation? The law of relaxation says that in all mental workings, effort defeats itself. What does that mean? Well, you've heard this before and, and you've experienced this. The more you try to force that word out, the more you try to say something, the harder it gets. The more you try to stop stuttering sometimes, the more you stutter, the more you stammer, the more you block, the harder it gets. Uh, Carl Jung said, whatever you resist persists and sometimes grows, right? Whatever you resist, per so you're trying to resist, you're trying to stop, you're trying to force it out. So you try to force the word out and it just makes it worse. So the law of relaxation says that instead of trying to force it, you simply allow it to happen. 
right? You allow it to happen. That in all mental workings, effort defeats itself. So when you're trying to make something happen, you're trying to force it when it comes to mental laws, then you actually do the opposite. You call it, you, you interrupt it, you interrupt the flow, you cause it to not happen, you cause it to persist, to remain, you cause it to grow, to get worse. So what do you do instead? Well, you think of your speech, and you're going to hear me say this again, you think of your speech like water, water flows. And we'll, again, we'll get into this a little later, but think of your speech like water, water flows. So let's talk about some of the characteristics of water. Water flows, water has momentum, it has power, it has a rhythm to it, right? It's very, very powerful, it's very smooth, it's stream. So think about a, a river. So when you talk about, or when you think about trying to say the things that you wanna say, so there's uh, this word that starts with uh, a vowel or a consonant, and you're trying to force that word out, what happens, right? And you're pushing it out and it makes it worse. So what can you do about it? Well, one of the short-term techniques that we talk about is airflow, learning to maintain constant airflow. We also talk about airflow linking. Right now we're talking about become more relaxed. So why is becoming more relaxed very important here and trying to say the things that you want to say? Well, you'll probably find that the more relaxed you are, the calmer you are, generally speaking, not all the time, generally speaking, the better you speak. This one thing, becoming more relaxed, is probably the one that gets uh, my clients anyway, their biggest bang for their buck. When they become more relaxed, and we'll talk about how, when they become more relaxed, their speech immediately improves, often by 80%, just by becoming more relaxed. How do you become more relaxed? One way is by learning to slow down, by learning to slow down, just slow everything down. Slow your speech down, slow your body movements down. Learn to just become a more relaxed person. Learn to pause more, learn to wait, learn to take your time, learn not to have to rush. Don't feel like you have to rush, like you have to jump in, like you have to hurry up and get it out because all of those things can, can cause stress and tension and anxiousness and can cause you or can at least trigger stuttering and stammering and blocking. So learn to take your time to slow down, to become relaxed. So you say, well, Michael, be, how, do, how do you become more relaxed? Becoming more relaxed is a habit. It's something that you can train yourself to do. It's something you can learn how to do. So that's where the law of reversibility comes in. Remember, we, we mentioned that, the law of reversibility. What's the law of reversibility? It says that you can feel your way into acting, so you can develop the feelings. You start to feel more relaxed, and you can act more relaxed. But sometimes we're not able to control our feelings in the moment. There's been times where I felt anxious, but I didn't act anxiously, right? Had a presentation. I felt anxious in the beginning, but I didn't act anxious. I act relaxed. And within a few minutes, I felt more relaxed. So the law of reversibility says you can feel your way into acting, but you can also act your way into feeling. So how can you become a more relaxed person? Start acting more relaxed. You do have control over your actions most of the time. So you can act more relaxed. How do you act more relaxed? Well, we talked one thing, slowing down. Just slow your speech down. You don't have to drag your speech. We'll talk in the next segment about dynamic speech, but slow your speech down. Um, breathe more. Move your body a bit slower, right? Pause a little more. Wait for a second before you jump in, right? Slow everything down. Tell yourself, I don't have to rush. I can take my time. So as you begin to tell yourself, you can get all the things that I'm talking about in the Pro 90D speech system. We walk through all of this. There's a whole segment on how to relax. You can get that in the system. You can learn that. So you start acting more relaxed. And what you'll find is you'll start feeling more relaxed. So as you feel more relaxed, you act more relaxed. As you act more relaxed, you'll feel more relaxed. And once you start acting and feeling more relaxed, you're going to find that you're often able more and more to say the things that you want to say.
right? You're able to say those words and letters that you didn't think you were able to say before. So first thing is redefine your goals. I want to speak smoothly, not I don't want to block on this word. I hope I don't block. No, I want to say what I want to say smoothly. What does smoothly look like? What does it feel like? Well, you model someone else. You practice speaking smoothly and you'll start speaking smoothly, right? You'll start speaking because what does your brain do? In that moment when you're thinking, I want to say this word, well, either consciously you anticipate and you say, oh, uh, I'm not going to be able to say this word. Why does that happen? Well, your brain goes back into your memory and says, we've had problems saying this word before, therefore we will have problems this time. So then immediately you anticipate, you start feeling anxious and you have problems saying that word for the most part. Or if it's not conscious and you're just speaking, you could be even totally relaxed. You could speak, but you come upon that word and subconsciously, right? Your brain is still working unconsciously. And it says, oh, wait a minute. Here's this letter or word that we have problems with. We're not going to say it. So it shuts down the motor system that controls your breathing. I can't say this word. So you didn't anticipate it, at least not consciously. You weren't thinking about it. You weren't even feeling anxious. You just weren't able to say it because on an unconscious level, you've had experiences in the past not being able to say it. So your brain went back before you even knew it and said, oh, here's a word that we can't say. How do we change that both on a conscious and an unconscious level? No, you change it by focusing on speaking smoothly, by changing these three things. I want you to remember these three things. Changing the way you see yourself as a speaker. I see myself as an excellent speaker, as a smooth speaker. Changing the way you see your speech. So the first one is changing the way you see yourself as a speaker. We call this your speaking identity. The second way is changing the way you see your speech. I see myself speaking smoothly, speaking clearly, right? speaking confidently. That's how I see my speech. It's smooth. I enjoy speaking. So change the way you see your speech. Third is you change the way you actually speak, right? You change the way you speak. So one is changing your speaking identity. You don't see yourself as a stutterer. You see yourself as an excellent speaker. Second is changing the way you see your speak, the way that you speak. Okay. I see myself speaking smoothly. And the third is you have to physically change the way you speak. If you speak the same way, you're going to get the same results. If you see your speech in the same way, you're going to get the same results. If you see yourself as a stutterer, you're going to get the same results. You have to change all three of those, right? So you have to remember that when you become more relaxed and you start speaking in a more relaxed manner and you start seeing yourself as a smooth speaker, all of those things will start to change together. All of those things start to change together. So how do you become more relaxed? Well, it's a habit. You tell yourself to slow down. You slow your movements down. You remind yourself that you don't have to rush. Right? So these are all things. You model someone who speaks in a calm way, in a relaxed way. Okay? These are all things that you can do to become a more relaxed person. So once you become more relaxed, you start speaking in that way, you're going to find that you're going to be able to say those things that you want to say. So the brain goes back then and it says, okay, here we go. Uh, I can't say this word or letter. So how do we change it? We change it by changing the overall way that we see ourselves, the way we see our speech and the way that we speak. So we start creating what? New successful speaking memories, new successful speaking experiences, right? And as you create these new memories, now your brain goes back and says, oh, we were able to say that word that last time. We were able to say this letter smoothly, right? So then even on an unconscious level, you're able to say it. Or even if you anticipate it, your brain says, no, uh, you think that you can't, but you, but you are. You can say that word because you said it before. So how do you create those new memories? Modeling. You practice speaking in this new way. You practice speaking in this new way. Right. So it says, well, if I get stuck on this word, how can I say it? If I keep getting stuck, how can I start saying it smoothly? Modeling. That's the magic of modeling. When people model, they're able to say things that they weren't able to say before. And yes, you can model in your everyday speech. 
have to be conscious for a period of time of speaking in a new way. You have to learn to remind yourself, just like if you're learning a new language, you have to remind yourself, oh, I got to use this new language. I got to speak in this new language. It's the same thing. There's no shortcuts. That's the way you do it. So let's look at this uh, third one here. Speak with a smooth rhythm and flow. Speak with a smooth rhythm and flow. So remember we said, think of your speech like water. So you've heard me talk about something called proactive speaking. We talked about some of the characteristics of water, how it flows. If there's an obstacle in the way, water just doesn't stop. Let's put a rock there or a boat there. Water doesn't stop at the boat. Uh-oh, there's a boat. We can't go anywhere. No, it's, it goes around the boat. It goes over the boat. It goes under the boat, right? Some obstacles, it will keep wearing on it. It will go through it. But water doesn't stop. It continues to flow. So when you think of your speech like water, then what you have to remember is that, hey, here's a word that I'm having a problem with. I don't just stop and get stuck and try to push it, right? Something that we call airflow linking. So I simply make sure that I link this word with the word before it and I keep flowing. In some cases, we flip the sentence around, right? Because it's all about maintaining a flow. Now, these are short-term techniques that I'm talking to you about, so not long-term. As you're working on your speech with modeling and doing all the other things, remember, changing the way you think of yourself, changing the way you think of your speech, and changing the way you speak, they all have to go together. Well, here's a couple of ways to change the way you actually speak. Let me give you an example. The word communications it used to be a word that I used to have trouble with. So I said, okay, I just won't say communication by itself. I'll always say it with another word. Someone says, well, I should be able to say this by myself. Well, you should, but right now you can't. So you think like water. So I'm just going to link it with another word and say it smoothly that way. So whenever I say communication, I just airflow link it. And now my brain says, oh, you've said communications probably millions of times, hundreds of thousands at least. You can say it smoothly. So not thinking about it, you're able to say it smoothly by itself. All right. So you're flowing. Your speech is like water. It's flowing. It's finding a way to still say the word. You're not substituting it. You're saying the word. You're just saying it differently, continuing with your speech flow. Here's another example that you've heard me use. Say, so, uh, what time are we going to lunch? All right. Let's just say what doesn't want to come out. So, so what time are we going to lunch? And what time are we going to you're keeping the flow going. Yes, I added a word. So what? It's the same meaning. Or I say, so we're going to uh, lunch at what time? I just switched around. Same thing, same meaning. But you're keeping it flowing. And what happens is you're creating a momentum. You're building new a new neural network, new successful speaking memories of you speaking well, of you being able to say what you want to say. Not substituting any words and just adding a word in front of it, occasionally changing the way that I say something, right? And so that I'm saying it smoothly, something that, that I used to do, right? So that now my speech is flowing, I'm building successful speaking memories. Now I stop thinking about speaking, I stop thinking about those words, those letters that I thought I couldn't say, and now I can say them without adding anything. If I do need to add it, I'll add it. If I don't need to add it, I won't add it. Do you see where I'm going with this? So it's about that flow, that rhythm and flow. So let's talk about rhythm, proactive speaking, um, several aspects of, of proactive speaking, inflecting, modulating your voice. I saw in a couple of job descriptions, they're looking for candidates who are able to communicate with inflections because they don't want someone being boring. Communicating with inflections, modulating the pitch or tone of your voice. This engages people, it holds their attention. It also creates a momentum, a momentum in your speech. It gives your speech more power and momentum. Inflecting, extending, right, extending. We also talk about extending when we say emphasizing. When you extend certain words, it gives your speech, or it gives you more control over your speech. It allows you to emphasize certain things like I just did. So I extended that word emphasize, right? So it allowed me to highlight. It also gave my speech a certain dynamism. So I'm also changing the speed by 
extending certain words, right? Not all my words, but certain words. What else? Okay, good. Um, so I'm able to extend, I'm able to emphasize, so it's changing the speed, it's making my speech more dynamic. I am articulating, right? I'm using my mouth, my tongue, my teeth, my jaw to articulate, okay? So that's helping me speak more proactively. I'm more engaged. I'm using body language, using my hands. I'm using my face, my eyebrows, or using my... And if I were uh, out speaking in public, I would be moving around, okay? Not just, <laughs> but moving around. So speaking more proactively, all giving my speech a certain rhythm and flow. So when you speak proactively, you're speaking with a certain rhythm and flow, which allows you to say things that you thought you couldn't say before because it's changing the way you speak. You're speaking in a way that people who speak well speak, okay? So it's about creating, remember something that we talked about a while back, it's called Hebb's Law, look that up. Neurons that fire together, wire together, which means, what does that mean, right? Well, if you want, to be able to say those words and letters that you want to say, to be able to speak well. You've got to speak, you've got to say those words and letters differently than you used to say them. You've got to think of yourself as a speaker differently than the way you thought of yourself before. If not, if you think of yourself the same way, oh, I always have problems with my speech. No matter what you do physically, you're going to have problems with speech. If you think of the way that you speak, oh, well, sometimes I get stuck. Okay, you're always going to get if you speak the same way, you speak fast, you're choppy, then you're always going to get stuck. So you got to change. So Hebb's Law says if you want to essentially uh, create a new pattern of behavior, a new pattern of thinking or whatever, then certain neurons that manage speech, that manage whatever behavior, uh, and if the behavior is automatic, that's primarily based in what's called the basal ganglia, right? The basal ganglia, which manages habit. So Hebb's law says, well, the more these neurons fire together that manage speech, right? For example, the more they're going to wire together. And the more they wire together, then the more that activity becomes natural and automatic. So how do we cause them to fire together and then wire together? Well, it is consistency, consistent repetition over time. So if you take anything that I say and you try it once, you try it once and it doesn't work, well, that's not very consistent. There's not many repetitions. Let's say you try it 10 times in a week. Well, you, you were kind of consistent. There was a lot of repetitions, but it was only a week. That's not enough time for Hebb's Law to take effect. So you have to do it consistently every day as often as you possibly can. Repetition, consistency every day for a certain number of weeks, we don't know what those weeks are, but the studies show 18 days, 254 days, those aren't the limits either, it can take longer, 66 days being the average, about two months or so, right? If you're practicing something long enough, Hebb's Law is taking effect, it's wiring it in, and then you can start to see it become automatic. So if I'm saying to you that I want you to tell yourself to relax, to slow down. You can't just try to do it once. Oh, I tried and I still got stuck. Well, of course you did. You keep trying it. And what happens is eventually you find that, oh, I'm actually able to say this a little better now. I'm actually able to speak a little smoother now. This is getting better, right? You're building momentum. And as you're building momentum, just imagine those neurons are firing, they're firing, they're firing. And then finally, they're wiring together and it becomes automatic. This takes months. This takes months. It doesn't usually take weeks. It takes months to happen. But you can start to see and feel the effects often within a few weeks, okay? Often within a few weeks. So speaking with a rhythm and flow, think of your speech like water. If you start thinking of your speech like water and you think of speaking proactively, what will begin to happen is you will be able to start saying those words and letters that you weren't able to say before, but you have to practice. And one of the ways to do that is by practicing modeling, for example, consistently, right, with enough repetition over time. All right, one more.
And then, fortunately, I think we do have Dr. Ismail, and I'm going to give him uh, some time to ask him some questions, and hopefully we can bring him on. Uh, he's a doctor, so he's going to be able to really uh, talk to us about a few things and about how he's doing now and how this process has impacted him and has allowed him to now go out and internationally known doctor and surgeon, fetal surgeon, fetal super fetal specialists. He's able to go out and do conferences and workshops and live radio and TV, just all kinds of stuff. Whereas before he would have shied away from these things. Okay. So one final thing, focus on the daily routine of ritual. Remember the law of habit. And I just kind of talked to you about that, right? None of this works if you're not, if you don't do it consistently, right? Consistently with enough repetition over time. It just doesn't work. And while you're doing it, remember, you are going to have those failures. I hate to call them failures, but you are going to have times where you still get stuck. It's just a part of the learning process. But you have to keep powering through it. Dr. Ismail will also probably talk to you about the daily routine that he practiced at first. He doesn't even have to do that now. And that's the magic of Hebb's law. You have to front load it, right? You have to front load the, the habit. And when you front load it, that is when you practice it early enough, then you begin to experience the results and it gets a lot easier and it becomes automatic. Okay. So in summary, uh, I gave you really four things to do. You may say, well, you didn't give us any specific techniques because the techniques generally are short term. This is long term. You redefine your goals. It's not that I want to stop blocking on this word. I don't want to block. No, I want to speak smoother. What does that look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Okay, let me model someone that speaks that way and practice speaking that way. And then you'll find, oh, now I'm able to say these words and letters and I'm not even thinking about it. That's what happens to my clients. Number two, become more relaxed. You're going to find the more relaxed you are, um, the, sl the slower you speak. I'm not talking about dragging your speech again, speaking dynamic, slowing down your speech, not feeling like you have to rush. You're going to find that you're going to be able to say those words and letters that you didn't think you could say before. You're more relaxed. There's less tension. There's less stress. I've literally seen this happen before my eyes. Number three, Speak with a smooth rhythm and flow. Think about your speech like water. Water actually has a rhythm to it. Go on YouTube and search for um, water sounds, ocean sounds, right? And what you're going to find is a variety of different videos that have people that, that allow you to listen to the sounds of the ocean or rivers or streams. That's relaxing, right? So think of your speech like water or and, and flow. A focus on the daily routine. Focus on what you have to do each day, not on the results. Focus on the results. You're going to frustrate yourself. Focus on what you have to do on a daily basis. Now, let's go ahead and bring Dr. Ismail out. Uh, here we go. Let's see. We're going to see if we can find Dr. Ismail. All right. Where is Dr. Ismail? Hey, Myra, you said that he's on. I'm not able to see him. If you can see him, for some reason, he's not showing up. Yeah, I'm chatting with the people now. He's there, but okay. he has to use a different link. He's there. He's in here? He needs to share his camera and mic. Okay. Yeah. Link. I okay. Yeah, see if they can get there, because I can't see him, so I can't inv invite him on. All right. All right, so... Uh, while we're waiting to see if we can get Dr. Ismail in here, what are your questions for me? What are your questions for me? Um, let me also go ahead and share a couple of things here. I'm going to share this handout with you. Okay, so we got a handout that we're going to share with you here. And let's see where this, yes, there it is right there. So go ahead and download the handout. It's going to uh, give you the slides that we just went through today. So that's one thing. Okay. Also, for those of you who are watching this webinar or you're on this webinar and you want to accelerate the 
journey from where you are now to smooth speech, the fastest way for you to do it is to work with the coach one on one. That's simply the fastest way uh, you can work on your own. And we're going to give you an opportunity to take advantage of our self study. Uh, some people start that way and then they quickly discover, hey, this is complex. I need some accountability because I find that it works and then I let up and then it stops working. So I need to figure out how can I customize this and personalize this for myself so that I can actually be consistent at this and get to the next level. So working with me one on one is by far your fastest way. Sometimes it's 10 times faster and I'm not exaggerating. It can take people years to get to the same place that it takes them months to get to working with me. So look at this as an investment in yourself. If you're out there losing and missing social opportunities, you're being quiet when you don't want to uh, work opportunities, you're not taking advantage of job opportunities, uh, you're not getting promoted, you're not even in the industry that maybe you don't want, that maybe you want to be in because of your speech. You don't have to stay that way. You can do something about it and it's not going to take that long and your whole life can be different. Uh, look at some of the videos that I share. They're not fake. They're not even a small percentage. I have a lot of people who go through the program that you'll never see because they decided not to share a video. And that's OK. There's, that's their privacy. But there's a whole bunch of people who do it whose lives have changed and you just will never see them. Are there people who go through the program and uh, regress or don't get the results? Of course, there are. There are people like that in every program. It doesn't matter who what the program is, because we're responsible, right? You're responsible for your speech. You can go through a language program. The language program works. If you didn't or if I didn't do the work, I'm not going to speak the language. If I don't go out there and speak to people, I won't be able to speak it. If I go out and I do what they told me to do, which is not unreasonable, if I go out and do it, I'll be able to speak fluently. Okay. So the system works simply because it's based on how we learn. So if you can learn it, you can do this. The fastest way to do it is by working with me one on one. So uh, there's a link there for you to do that. OK. So go ahead and click that link, book a session with me, only book the session, though, if you're ready. Now you have some questions, you want to talk to me first, you want to find out more about the program directly from me. But you're in a position financially where if you wanted to, you could. It doesn't mean you have to when you book the session with them. Like you don't have to do it, obviously. But it means you're ready to do it. So if you're thinking about it six months, a year later, wait until then. OK, wait until then. So this is for people who are serious, you're professionals or you're professionally minded. Some of my best students, some of my best clients have been you know, college students, master's students. Um, but this is for people that want to take their speech to the next level and they're ready now. Book your assessment session. OK, do that now uh, so that you're not just spinning your wheels, wasting time and losing money, literally losing money. Now, there'll be some of you. Who also. I'm just going to close this just for a second. There'll be some of you who also. Want to take advantage of the self study. OK, so for that, you can take a look at the self study. There's uh, basically one version of it, but there's one that's mostly all audio. There's another one. It's audio and video, and it comes with its own mobile application. The mobile application only gives you the audio, though. So this is a good way to start. This is your first experience with Pro 90D to start with it, to get uh, the idea, feel for how it works. So look at our uh, mobile self study. And once again, it comes with its own mobile application. OK, so this is a great place for you to start. Don't delay. Don't delay. The longer you wait, the less likely you're to do it. Take advantage of it today and get started today. For those of you who are thinking about the coaching, but you want to start with self-study, if you do it within 30 days, right, within 30 days or so, we'll deduct the cost that you paid for the self-study from the coaching. So if you, within 30 days, you said, boom. I see this, I like it, this works, but I want to do coaching, then we'll go ahead and deduct the total cost so that you haven't lost anything. All right. So back to, uh, let's see if we can get Dr. Ismail on here. If not, 
we will definitely have him in here the next time. Let's see if he's in here now. Give me just a moment. Yeah, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing him in here. So we'll have to talk to them about how we can make this work the next time. Yeah, really wanted to get him in here, but we will uh, even have him create a video. So what is the cost of the personal coaching, someone asked, in um, rupees? So the best thing to do is to go to the coaching page, look at the packages, because there's three packages, and then take that number, paste it into Google uh, from USD to INR, and it will give you that cost. We're going to have some specials going on. In fact, it's actually on the website now. If you need to break it into a couple of payments, you can. You can even start now. When I say start, you can make a payment now and start, say, in January or something. Make your second payment later and start in January because the holidays are coming up. So, Or you can get started now. Right? It's totally up to you. But if you need to make a couple of payments, you can do that. Uh, you can register now, put down your first payment, and you can start later. Right? We can do that. So lots of different options. You can email me about that. So, Myra, were we able to get... Dr. Ismail on here, or it doesn't look like we were, right? Okay. So, yeah, great. Well, does anyone have any any additional questions? Anyone have additional questions? Please ask them now. So you all have a link to book your assessment session, you have a link to uh, get the self-study. We'll also send you out an email for those things. I'm sorry we weren't able to get Dr. Ismail on here. We're having some problems with the, the browser or something. We'll definitely get him in here the next time. Okay, so we are going to be wrapping up. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? So you're going to get a link to the replay of this webinar. You want to watch it. I know some of you are looking for a, some hard technique, but remember, short term techniques are great. They work, but it's short term. You want to change your everything starts with your thinking. So you want to change that first. The second thing that we want to do is you want to have a model, someone that you can practice speaking smoothly with someone that you can model. You want to also create this, this habit of speaking this way. You want to think of your speech like water that flows and not think about those particular words. Just think about your overall speech and the message, right? We'll go deeper into that in future webinars, okay? But all of that is a way to build a new way of speaking on top of your old way. You build a new way, you increase your smoothness, you decrease the blocking and stuttering. Think of it like that. The smoother I get, the less I get stuck. Okay, so get the smoothness up as high as possible. Any Hello, a very good evening from Durban, South Africa. My name is Dr. Ismail. I'm a physician and fetal surgeon here in South Africa. I haven't posted for a while, but I thought it was important for me to post now just to give you an update of where I am in my speech journey. Well, I joined Michael Williams's Pro ITD system about 18 months ago, and it has changed and transformed my life. Forever, and I'm so thankful about that. I actually define myself now as being in the pre-Pro 90D phase and the post-Pro uh, 90D phase. What Pro 90D has done for me, as well as the teachings of Michael Williams, is that it has improved exponentially my standing and status in the scientific community because now I can articulate very eloquently and very nicely all the concepts that I always used to write about. In fact, the last six months have been fantastic. They've been like a dream. I've been invited to present in international conferences around the world. I was in Austria a few months ago where people came up and said, my goodness, you're so eloquent and you are able to uh, verbalize and articulate very, very difficult concepts so easily. And it just goes on and on. And I've presented in many, many national conferences in the last six months, I've also taken part in discussion and debates on various scientific topics. 
and it has certainly improved and changed my life. So what's the secret? Well, the central core, the central core of the Pro 90D system is this. It is having the ability to be able to change your speaking identity. That is crucial. You need to change your speaking identity. And what do you mean by that? What it means is that you've got to move away from your disfluent self to your fluent self. You've got to make that transition from disfluency to fluency. Now, what you need to understand is that your disfluent self and the pathways and the neurological pathways that define you as being disfluent is still going to be there. But that, those pathways, neurologically, you can override. You can override that. You can begin to develop new pathways of fluency. And the more you practice and the more you repeat your fluent self, your new speaking identities, those new pathways develop strength. They become strong, right? Neurons that fire together, wire together. And as you keep on practicing, right, you will start developing a habit. You will start developing a new skill. Remember, speaking fluently is a skill that you can develop just as when you want to learn a new language. It's exactly the same principle. So what you do is that you forget about your disfluent self. You start all over again and develop new pathways, right, in developing a fluent self, a fluent speaking self. And what happens then is that your self-concept and your self-identity begins to transform and begins to change. And the crucial transition you're going to make when you become a fluent speaker is that you do not see yourself anymore as a stutterer or a stammerer or being disfluent. You always see yourself as a fluent speaker. right? And that is absolutely crucial. Why? It is crucial because we all are going to have some sort of disfluencies as we go along. No one can say they are not disfluent. Everybody is disfluent. But when you see yourself, okay, as or your self-identity, your self-concept is that of being a fluent speaker, whenever you hit a bump or you become disfluent, it is easier to overcome that bump than if you see yourself as being disfluent. That is a crucial, crucial transition to actually make. The beauty, the beauty of the Pro 90D system is this. At the core of the teaching of Pro 90D, and I will say the teachings of Michael Williams, is that the Pro 90D system teaches you to be an excellent speaker. It teaches you to be an excellent, brilliant, articulate speaker. Now, the, the focus is therefore not on the stuttering and stammering. The focus is not on it. So we are not there to treat the stuttering, to cure the stuttering. The focus is on making you become and develop into an excellent speaker. And what happens? When, you, when your focus is on trying to become an excellent speaker, and a brilliant speaker, and an articulate speaker, it means that the more you do that, the less you're going to stutter or stammer. So if you speak fluently, and you're an excellent speaker for 90% of the time, you cannot be disfluent for 40% of the time. Okay, the numbers just don't add up. So as you develop these techniques of becoming an excellent speaker, of changing your identity, of, become, of transforming who you are, of transforming your self-concept, you will find that slowly and incrementally your disfluent self will slowly disappear because your concentration now is on speaking smoothly and being an excellent speaker. So the disfluent part of it will take care of itself. And this is the concept that I used. So the concept that I used is that I concentrated on becoming an excellent speaker. I didn't concentrate at all on trying to cure the disfluent self or the stuttering or the stammering. I just focused on becoming an excellent speaker. And as I did that, it helped me in my presentations, it helped me in my confidence because now I was more interested in de delivering a message. I was more interested in delivering 
what I wanted to say. I was more interested in delivering the concepts rather than worrying about words. Am I going to get blocked? Am I going to get stuck? No, I don't think about that anymore. It's all about delivering the message. And that is the most important, important, crucial transition that you have to make. So when you stand up, in a, uh, when, you, when you're faced with a few hundred people and you have to give an impromptu presentation, which I've been doing now for the last few months. In fact, yesterday, I was just speaking to Michael and I said I was actually called on to host an event and I was put on the spot where I had to speak impromptu for about 15 minutes on a very scientific topic. So when I was called over to speak, the thing that I did and what I looked at and what I concentrated on is I am now a fluent speaker. So I kept on telling myself, I'm a fluent speaker, I'm an articulate speaker, I'm an excellent speaker. I am interested in delivering this message to the best of my ability. I am not thinking about difficult words, about blogs, about anything else except that I want to deliver this message to the best of my ability. And believe you me, that mindset, okay, has seen me through many, many presentations, absolutely fluently, never stuttered at all. In fact, I actually hosted the whole evening, which lasted about an hour and a half, where uh, I was asking questions, I was answering questions, and I was basically modulating the entire discussion. And at the end, I had a professor from Holland who came to speak to me and said, you know what, Dr. Borat, it's actually Professor Borat now, um, you spoke so elo eloquently. I understood everything that you actually said. You spoke beautifully, you were articulate, and you verbalized so well. And in the back of my mind, I'm saying this is all pro 90 d This is exactly what Michael Williams was talking about at the start of the program. He says, when you know what you have reached, or you've reached your destination, is when people will come up to you and tell you, my goodness, you are eloquent, you speak so well, you can articulate easily. And in my profession, that is really important for me because, I, as I always say, nobody can see what's in your head, but people can only see how you communicate. And if you're a scientist and you can't communicate well, that doesn't bode well for your future and your career because a lot of times you have to sort of defend your concepts. You have to defend your your discussion, you have to defend what you are saying, your writings, your scientific concepts. And if you can't do that properly and you can't do that well, well, it's not going to work for you. So you need to be able to engage in discussions and debates and, and be able to put your point of view forward. And some, it's something else that I realized that Michael said in one of his videos that at the end of the journey, when you know you've, you've arrived, your speech will be an asset to you and will not be a liability. And that's the absolute truth. So for the last maybe six or seven months, my speech has become an asset to me. I'm able to be able to say what I want to say, to say it in an eloquent way, to be able to argue and discuss and defend important concepts. And that is really, really important to me. I've also appeared on radio interviews, on TV interviews with the same mindset that I am going to speak clearly, I'm going to be articulate, I've changed right, my speaking identity. I've changed, I've transformed my speaking identity into a fluent self and I will not get dragged back into my disfluent self. Always remember, your disfluent part or your, the pathways that are disfluent that was pre pro 90 d are still going to be there, okay? The, the trick, right? the issue is that you've got to develop the new pathways that are going to override and become dominant over the existing pathways. So your new speaking identity and your new fluent self has to override and become more dominant over the old disfluent self. When your new speaking identity and your new fluent self or those pathways become strong enough to override the old self, then you have arrived at your destination. That is when you will become a fluent speaker 
an articulate speaker, right? And you will be able to be impactful. You will speak with authority and you will influence other people. So I think the question often arises, what is the difference between an excellent speaker and not stuttering or stammering? That's a massive, massive difference between the two. Okay. To become an excellent speaker means you have the ability to influence others, to be authoritative, to be impactful, to change people's minds, to change the mood in the room, and to be able to take people with you in what you are trying to discuss. Stuttering and stammering doesn't even come into the equation. That's just the basics. But being an excellent speaker creates a whole new environment for you. If you are not going to change your speaking identity and you are not going to change the way you speak and become articulate and all of that, and all you're interested in is not stuttering or stammering, well, then you will be stuck with tricks and tips and strategies that will work in some speaking situations and will not work in others. In high pressure situations, it may not work because you have not fundamentally changed the way you speak. So as Michael says, that the most important thing in this whole journey is not to band-aid this whole disfluent self story. You've got to do surgery. Don't band-aid it. You've got to do major surgery and you've got to change. You've got to fundamentally change who you are as a speaker. Right. And you will find that once you develop this confidence of speaking clearly, of being able to articulate and verbalize what you want to say, that confidence will track into other areas in your life and you will become really confident in other areas as well. So I thought it was important for me to give you an update on, on my speech journey, right, and where I am at the moment. And uh, yeah, so I'll speak to you again and you keep well. Ta-da, bye-bye.